Hello, this is the Fall 2020 Virtual Open House for Tulane University's Master of Sustainable Real Estate Development Program, or MSRED for short. We're located in New Orleans, Louisiana. My name is John Huppy. I am the Assistant Director of Real Estate at the School of Architecture. And I also happen to be a Tulane undergraduate and graduate alum. Uh, I personally completed the program, the MSRED program in 2014. In addition to my work at the university, I have also created a successful private real estate development business. And you'll soon see that most of our faculty also represent a wide array of expertise in the field and are actively engaged in industry. Today, I'm also joined by the director, Cassius Peeler. Cassius, can you introduce yourself quickly? Sure, sure, John. Um, my name is Cassius Peeler. I am uh, uh, trained as an architect and an attorney. Uh, most of my private practice was in real estate development for public housing authorities doing large uh, public private redevelopments in um, in cities across the country but uh, i'm a graduate of tulane's uh, architecture school and uh, glad to be back here in new orleans uh, now director uh, for the sixth year great so next i'm going to pass it back off to cassius who's going to do a, a review of the program its salient features including the curriculum the faculty some of the focuses of the program and finally, Cassius is gonna review some of the important application details. Cassius? Great, um, thanks, John. Um, first, you know, you're, if you're watching this, you already know we're at Tulane University and the real estate program is housed in the School of Architecture, which is a little bit unique, but um, Tulane is a research one university. So it's a major research institution uh, located in one of the most unique cities in the country in the heart of the Gulf Coast. And, and that, that location and, and our kind of geography and history are really an important part of, uh, of the experience of being at Tulane and the real estate program, as well as our mission and, and how we see um, the, the training and uh, education of real estate professionals going forward. Um, quickly, we'll talk about some basics, a degree overview. Um, it's, a, it's a short uh, three semester, uh, 11 month program. So it's focused with a, a summer start, intensive summer start and a fall and a spring uh, follow-up that's, uh, that's typical. Um, our, our students come from a variety of uh, architectural, or, uh, of undergraduate backgrounds. Uh, we'll talk about that uh, later on. You can see the, the interdisciplinary nature of our students as well as our curriculum. That's, that's really important. This blended education of business, design, urbanism, the economics and, uh, and legal issues that go into uh, development decisions that have a, an impact on neighborhoods and communities around the country and the world. Um, the, uh, it's a practice-based, uh, practice-focused program. So uh, we're equipping students to, uh, to have skills that they need to be successful in the short term in, in the industry, but also to have a perspective on the industry that allows them to transform their work and their communities over time. The, uh, the, the curriculum is focused, as I said, with a summer start, intensive summer start. You can see the, the coursework here. There's uh, some finance and economics courses uh, each semester, and there are design, legal, urbanism courses that, uh, that uh, uh, complement those, uh, those finance, core finance courses, uh, and then a number of electives and some other ways that you can individualize your curriculum uh, in, this, uh, in this focused time period. Our faculty, as John mentioned, are um, almost all adjunct faculty. Uh, they come from a variety of backgrounds themselves. It's an interdisciplinary faculty who have uh, active practices uh, in the region and nationally. And um, you get some, some images here, but uh, uh, we're excited to also be able to announce two full-time faculty that are new this year. Uh, Jesse Keenan, Dr. Keenan, uh, has joined us from Harvard University where he has uh, really been a leader in research on uh, climate, the climate impacts and overlap, uh, overlap of climate change and real estate investment decisions and, and um, climate migration and, uh, and, and how investment and long-term investment specifically in, uh, in real estate might be affected by or transformed by uh, climate change issues. Um, so that's, that's an exciting, he's an exciting addition uh, as well. Daniela Rivera uh, is, uh, is also new full-time this year, although she has taught in the program before, but uh, uh, has spent time working in New Orleans and across the state uh, post-Katrina, especially thinking about land use issues and, and uh, affordable housing issues uh, that, uh, that are responsive to and, and preparing us 
for, uh, for future environmental and other uh, challenges that, that are affecting uh, the entire city, uh, but certainly have an effect on real estate development. The, uh, the partnerships I mentioned, this is a uh, practice focused program. So we have a fall internship uh, component that's, uh, that's optional, but uh, the majority of our students opt to pursue that. It's a paid internship. And uh, you can see some of the examples of the mostly local firms and, uh, and nonprofits and um, public agencies where our students are working this year. So these are all the, the current student placements. Uh, we also see the directed research partners, which is our, our program ends with a capstone uh, independent research project really where uh, our students are partnered with folks out in practice in, in the private sector, uh, nonprofit sector and, and public sector. And you can see some of the examples of those partnerships um, focused on partners that were outside of New Orleans here. We have about half of our students uh, will stay in New Orleans and the Gulf Coast region, and about half will leave the, the region after graduation. So, um, so we have a, a national reach as well as a kind of a core commitment to our, our local community. Um, these are some student profiles, just really with the undergraduate degrees, you can see a, a mix of undergraduate uh, backgrounds. Uh, it's about 30 to 40% architecture, design and planning, maybe 30 to 40% business uh, management and then uh, a mix of, uh, of liberal arts backgrounds. Uh, we've had students uh, from 35 states and countries. And, um, and I think the, the common theme that our students have is a desire to, to, have, to do real estate development work, to have an impact in the built environment that, uh, that affects uh, and, and is cognizant of the effects in um, social and uh, environmental and economic ways. Um, the uh, kind of places people go with, uh, with this degree, these are in the first couple of years after graduation, you can kind of see the, the, the range of, of job titles anyway. Um, project manager and financial analysts are pretty typical job titles and, and probably the, the um, plurality of our graduates uh, go in that direction right after graduation. But uh, a lot of students see while they're here, they see the, the range of, of places where they can use their skills and, and have an impact in, uh, in, in corporations they didn't realize had a development interest in public agencies that they maybe didn't realize the, the connection and overlap with public private uh, efforts and the impact that can have. And then, um, and then a high performing nonprofit agencies too that, uh, that are really achieving a social mission, uh, but doing it in a way that's uh, financially sustainable and, uh, and, and can sustain a career. Our uh, alumni works are some examples of projects that our alumni have worked on. Um, these are uh, private sector developments, some large scale projects uh, in New Orleans and across the country, um, uh, large scale uh, rehabilitation efforts of, uh, of cultural assets that, that are now um, productive uh, um, developments uh, here in New Orleans and elsewhere. Uh, those, the, the content is often a kind of mixed use focus where there's commercial and residential as a, as a component. Uh, we do have hospitality, hospitality focus on hotels and, and restaurants and other developments that are, again, part of a mixed use environment typically. Um, and then we, we really focus on the financing that makes these kinds of projects uh, doable and, and financially feasible and also focus on uh, the kind of outcomes that our, our students are interested in. So uh, using uh, historic tax credits, new markets, tax credits, low income housing tax credits, uh, opportunity zones are kind of a new opportunity. Um, and uh, there's often tax credits for energy efficiency and, and other kind of stormwater management uh, efforts that have, uh, that have a wider, wider impact as well. Uh, our alumni also do smaller scale projects. So uh, about 20% of our alums work for themselves, uh, certainly within a few years out of school. That's a, that's a goal that many people have in coming to the program. Uh, New Orleans in particular is a place where you can have a real impact over uh, a, a couple of years. If you stay focused, uh, you, can, you can start projects, especially at this scale you see here without uh, a significant amount of capital. Uh, it still takes some know-how and capital, but, um, but this is the kind of, uh, work that a lot of our students hope to do uh, and, and own themselves, really be working for themselves. So um, that's, a, that's a feature of the program that's, uh, that's, that we've seen success with. 
talking about investments and uh, and wealth building, uh, the, the program itself is an investment. And uh, you can see the tuition and fees here for the current year. Those obviously change a little bit each year, but, uh, but this gives you a good sense of where uh, the program stands. Um, we do have uh, some grants that are available. I really encourage people to apply by the January 15th deadline to be considered for, for some of the uh, scholarships that we have. Uh, there are also the paid internships I mentioned as a, a way to uh, add to some of the income while you're here. And um, obviously Tulane has a financial aid office that helps students or the majority of our students take out loans to get through the program. And, um, and they do that in part by filling up the federal aid, uh, federal application um, for uh, financial aid, uh, the FAFSA form that's, um, that you'd have to fill out for the financial aid office. That's, uh, that's something you can be filling out while you're filling out the application for uh, the program as well. Um, speaking of the application, we have, um, obviously there's a form online, uh, upload transcripts from undergraduate or if you have a graduate degree uh, or some graduate credits, upload those transcripts. Uh, obviously a resume, uh, most people have a, a resume but we wanna see your work history. Uh, I didn't mention that a lot of our students, uh, our kind of average age is 27, 28, 29. This year, average age is 30. So our students have a sub substantial amount of work experience typically, although we do have some students who come straight out of undergrad uh, who are, uh, have a specific focus and uh, have had a lot of success with those students. But we wanna see your resume. And then the, I think the core part of the application is the, the personal statement. It's kind of two pages where you talk about why this program is good for you at this moment. I always encourage applicants to think about this part of the application as a um, convincing themselves that this is the right thing to do at the right time. And, and if, if it's com compelling to you about why you wanna do this, it'll be compelling to us. Um, and then of course we have a letters of recommendation or we have an option where you can, uh, can interview some professionals in the real estate industry and maybe learn something about their careers or get advice from them about where they see the industry headed. And, uh, and that would be an alternate way of doing the letters of recommendation if that's, um, if that's of interest to you. And then if you are not a native English speaker, we require the um, TOEFL exam and, uh, and an online interview. So basically set up a time to meet with me uh, over Skype or some other online format. And uh, we just have a brief conversation. Um, and that's, uh, that's in addition to the TOEFL requirement. I'll highlight here, this is the first year we haven't required the GRE or GMAT. Part of that is pandemic related, but I think uh, it's also been uh, you know, more of an obstacle for students than it is a benefit for us in making that assessment. So we're really interested in uh, folks who can be successful here, obviously first, and then, um, then what's, your, what's your personal statement? What's your, what are your goals? What do you hope to do after you're done with this program? Because that's why, um, that's why the program is here really, not, not just to, to graduate people with degrees. Um, some key dates in the process. January 15th is obviously the big one. That's when uh, the applications are due. We, will, we do accept applications on a rolling basis after that. Again, we have a number of people who are coming from a job and maybe aren't on a kind of academic schedule, aren't thinking about this now, but our grants and other, and, and our main focus for admissions is January 15th. So um, focus on that date. And then uh, typically about a month later, we have the admissions decisions out to everyone. Uh, so you have some time to think about it, uh, to talk with us, um, to, to attend our open house. We usually have an open house in uh, early March. And, uh, and then uh, a commitment date by April 15th is, uh, is necessary to reserve your spot for, uh, for the summer start. Because we do start a little bit earlier than, than a lot of programs. We don't start in the fall, we start in June. And, uh, and this year that'll be, uh, uh, June 14th, but, but we'll have an orientation a couple of days before that. So um, that's really the end of the core uh, presentation. I'm sure you have some questions. Uh, we invite you to contact uh, both John and myself, either one of us. Uh, we're very accessible. Our, my cell phone number is on our website. And, uh, and, and this is a, a program that is uh, we have access to the entire resources of Tulane University. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, uh, reach, I think, for the program, but it's also at a scale where uh, you get to know your faculty and you get, to, to, you get access to us. Um, so we encourage you to, to reach out to us directly if you have any questions. Um, John, did you have any, any other things you wanna make sure we cover? Yeah, I have just two last, last notes or common questions. One is always a common question. The other one's a little bit more particular to where we are now in 2020. But the first question is more about sustainable, uh, sustainability. 
why sustainable real estate development? Why is that part of the title? Can you elaborate a little bit more about what sustainable means uh, at Tulane? Sure, I, th I think, um, so this program was created post Katrina and, and I think we had an awareness in New Orleans that uh, the development was, was both more important than, uh, than maybe we were uh, paying attention to it before and, uh, and more complex. And so creating a program that, that focused on the kind of mixed finance projects that, uh, that were getting done at that time and that are still uh, being done uh, elsewhere, again, with, uh, with the tax credits I mentioned um, that combine a kind of social and environmental goals with uh, financial sustainability for the projects and the project team. Um, that's, a, that's been something that we've done more in New Orleans since Katrina, um, but I think it's also reflective of a, a, a greater sense of responsibility that we, we have to build back differently. And, uh, and that includes uh, addressing some of the, the social issues that we continue to see around the country uh, that, are, that are affected and exacerbated in many ways by the built environment, uh, as well as the environmental issues that we know are uh, existential issues. We certainly know that here in New Orleans. And, uh, and again, the built environment of the development with that we uh, create is, uh, is, is driving much of that, uh, that threat. And so how can we, uh, how can we reduce it? Um, those, are, those are things that we've focused on as a program. And uh, we haven't got all the answers, of course, but, uh, but, but it's, um, we've got a lot of expertise and a lot of experience. And, um, and I think that's a feature of the program and why sustainable is in the, the kind of title. It's really, do we have a long-term view for the impact of our work versus can we, can we build something, flip it and move on? Great. And then my last question really has to do with 2020. We're in this pandemic world. Obviously, those effects are going to extend into 2021. So can you just speak to how Tulane has really taken a, a really a national or global lead from a university perspective to create an, an absolutely outstanding academic environment, uh, despite all of the obvious challenges? Sure, I think um, you know that's a continuing question. I, we are obviously hopeful that uh, that maybe we can all uh, solve it before uh, before the summer, even. Um, but I think uh, that's certainly not our plan. We're not planning for uh, the absolute best case scenario. And this year, we have we have learned a lot. But as a university, uh, Tulane has been a leader in bringing people back on campus who feel safe and are able to do that. We have some students this year who are not on campus for, the, for personal reasons um, related to COVID typically, uh, but, we, uh, but we have a number of students who, who are here and who are trying to, to work together as, uh, as, as uh, much as they could um, before the pandemic. Um, we've, like I said, we've learned a lot. I expect there to be uh, continued issues with um, remote versus in-person uh, education in the summer and the in the fall at least um, of next year, but um, but I think that we've um, we've also learned that there's a lot of interaction that really can happen. I've been I've been surprised, pleasantly surprised by a lot of the interaction that uh, that the internet has made possible, um, as well as um, what our faculty have been committed to doing. Um, so I think. Uh, and one of the things that we do with students who, uh, who are admitted, I encourage uh, you all to reach out to, and we connect you to some of our alumni. So talking to current students uh, would be a good, a good aspect of kind of um, checking up on what we've done and how that experience is for them. Um, I think the internships I mentioned earlier, I was concerned that you know, maybe we wouldn't have any internships in the fall, but, but we have more. Uh, some of them are in person where that's uh, possible and people have wanted that option, but, um, but many of them are, are remote still, but, um, but we've been able to continue that program as well. So I think, um, you know, we're, we're learning a lot uh, as, a, as a society, as a, as a country, um, but, uh, but I think we're, we're also moving forward. We're not, uh, we're not just holding ourselves back. Um, and, and, and we are learning lessons that we'll continue uh, to use beyond uh, whenever the pandemic has subsided and, and we have gotten better control of that. And certainly the industry has had some pauses, uh, but I, I'd say the vast majority of real estate work continues. And we've even on the job outcome of you know, students who graduated in past years, uh, as recently as May 2020, those students are still getting jobs. They're still, you know, able to move on with their careers and get the, the first step out into the world. So we're really happy to see that that hasn't had 
huge impacts and we expect all future classes to, to have the same level of success coming out of a program like our program. Yeah, I think I think the the networking aspect of job search is much harder. Um, I think and, and that's a crucial part of the job search. And that's a crucial thing that we uh, that we provide and we focus on is, is building a professional network that can help sustain you over a career that you start to do that uh, from day one, if you didn't even come here with a, with a, a network of your own, um, which most people do. But I think that, that that's been more difficult, but the, the job market I think is still certainly out there. Uh, you know, we'll we'll see what the next few months brings in terms of the economy. But I have no reason to think that we're gonna we're gonna stop. It, it seems like we're more likely to to have uh, have figured out some of the the biggest challenges around the pandemic, and then there um, there will be a kind of pent up demand for uh, some projects that either were stalled or some investments that we see a real need to make uh, as a as a community as a society. So um, you know, I think. Uh, May 2020 wasn't probably a great time to graduate, but um, but I think uh, certainly next summer and the summer after that uh, might be very good times to to graduate and um, and uh, and like John said, our our graduates have been getting uh, getting jobs and had been different starting them differently. We have people who live in Louisiana and and work for a firm in New York, um, but that's that just means there's more opportunity even as there's maybe some some of the more traditional opportunities seem like they're not there there's there's new opportunities as well and, and we help find them yeah and, and related to that point uh, i don't think you mentioned this earlier but where do our students come from about half generally have some tie to the greater gulf region uh, before coming to tulane either they've been in school or grew up in the area um, but then the other half come from all over the, the US, they come from all over the globe from different countries. And what we find is that when students graduate from our program, it's usually about the same split, about 50% stay in the general region, and the other 50% uh, plant themselves out and seed themselves into different markets all over the world. And so that same 50% is not the same coming out of the program. So there's certainly a little bit of shifting that happens as well as people learn to love living in Louisiana or the Gulf region or even just New Orleans. Um, but one thing that's allowed our, our program and our alumni to do is have uh, a seating all over the place that I think from a networking perspective is a really, really strong feature of the program to be able to say, hey, I want to you know, go live or I came from Chicago. Who do we know in Chicago? And now, you know, we, we've been in existence long enough that we have a lot of alumni who are working all these different pockets all over the country. And John, I'll say something else about the, the pandemic and the job market. I think that um, we I mentioned the two faculty, Dr. Keenan and, and, um, and Dr. Rivera Bryant, they, um, they both have a different focus on um, on development and the impact that these larger kind of macro, either environmental or social challenges are going to have, um, you know, that's been something they've been studying. And, and suddenly it's a public health pandemic. It's a different kind of challenge, um, but, it, but it's, it's very much a time where, you know, people who have been just at work grinding it out um, are, are still doing that, but, but maybe more anxious about, well, what does this really mean? You know, is, is this something I can just hold my breath for and it's gonna go away? Or is this going to transform how we how we build and how we develop projects, how we finance the projects, and and uh, and what we're building? And I think I think it is. And uh, we don't have all the answers, but we have some real experts, um, people who have both practically here in New Orleans because of the last twenty years of our experience here, uh, but also in their um, in their more academic research careers, been trying to look over the horizon and help position uh, someone who's starting out a career that's going to span. Uh, you know, 30 plus years, uh, what, what, how do you prepare for that? Uh, I think we have some great people here who, um, who have been thinking about that and can help, uh, help our graduates prepare for their careers. Great. Thank you so much, Cassius, and thank you for tuning in. Uh, again, we are available anytime uh, via email, phone call, drop in um, to take your questions, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you. Thank you.